Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll chat with uh, longtime Ferris State football supporter and Bulldog alum Bill Shively. We'll have Ferris State uh, former equipment manager Ben Muma on hand to tell a story that uh, happened this past summer. And we'll also chat with Ferris State men's basketball assistant coach Bill Killian. We'll start, though, with Bill Shively, a longtime Bulldog supporter and alum. And Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I know your, uh, your involvement with Ferris State football goes back uh, many decades to the 1970s uh, when, when you were a player here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, uh, I walked on in uh, 74, and uh, right after I got out of the service, and uh, there was several GIs on the team at that time, John Sontag, a couple others. And, but anyway, yeah, that's when it started, back 74. <laughs> what, what kind of led you to Ferris State? Why, why the decision to, to become a Bulldog uh, back then? Well, uh, I, you know, it's kind of a chance thing. Uh, I was talking to... Um, I got out of the service in June of 74 and was talking to a, a, a young man in, in, in my hometown area, Port Huron, and uh, he was coming up here to play ball. And uh, I, had, I had played three years for the Air Force in Europe, so I wanted to keep going. And uh, I, I says, he gave me the name of Coach Coso at the time, and I called him and he said, sure, come on up. So. <laughs> I know, obviously, uh, many many great memories uh, from your time as a as a football player. What what are some games, maybe, or some some moments that really stand out for you as a player? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of great fun back then. I guess um, you know, we we played. A, uh, we used to, we were in a funny. That's when we were transitioning from NAIA to D three, and uh, we played like uh, University of Nebraska Omaha, uh, who was one double a team now and they were exciting and we only lost 10 to 7 and uh, and then we uh, lost on the last play of the game to central college of iowa who won the d3 national title that year but uh, it, you know of course if, if any of the memorable ones uh was that team from allendale uh had a couple of wins over them in uh, my time and uh, one was uh Danny Delamarter's 50-some yard field goal in the last play of the game. Uh, they always give Danny all the credit, kick to 50. The play before that, I caught a pass that got us, I said, got Danny in range. I think we got to the 43 or something. And, uh, <laughs> and he kicked a 57 yard field goal, 56 something, I don't know. But uh, that was a big win because they were undefeated. And I think we were two and three or something. And uh, it was a nice win. Well, obviously, you were a receiver and also a punt returner. Uh, your name's still in there in the record books. What's it? What's it like having that maybe uh, carry yeah. on for so long? Well, that uh, I enjoyed punt returns because uh, as a receiver on a wishbone team, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to a former player that I played with, Russ Penning, uh, and uh, I had the at one point I had the record for 21 receptions in a season uh, was the record here. And uh, now it's only been broke by about 50 guys, I think. Uh, so, so returning kicks, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I did that in the service, too, and uh, had a real love of punt returns. And um, again, uh, my best was against uh, Allendale, 80-yard uh, return that set the conference record. But uh, I enjoyed punt returns. Uh, uh, my uh, whateverness and even though coaches yelled at me I, I never fair caught one so uh, I took some hits but uh, <laughs> it was fun. I, I know obviously a lot of those relationships you uh, have with uh, your former teammates carry over I see uh, the golf outing uh, every summer coming back and, and have a, a team of guys that uh, you played with that uh, take part in it every year. Yeah I mean it, it, you as you know I mean football is a real brotherhood and uh, uh, still stay in close contact with probably a dozen guys that I played with. Uh, lot, some of them in this area, like John Sontag and Steve Dushan in Manistee and John Bayless and Bob Granberry even lives up here now. So uh, it's just great. Uh, you know, you kind of forget the records uh, after 40 some years and uh, just get together. And, and it's fun. I mean, I'm talking to guys. I get calls all the time. Lonnie Likes and Freddie Kirkland and this Russ Penning who's in Philadelphia and guys all the time calling to see what's going on and how we're going to be. And 
and now they're calling this year to moan and groan, you know. <laughs> I know, obviously, uh, this year you mentioned it right there, a little different for you, somebody that's followed uh, Bulldog football and supported the Bulldogs for so long. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's a little unusual on Saturday afternoons. My wife wants to ship me right out of town. <laughs> uh, she says, you're, you're, you're depressed. I said, well, just for a while. I get over it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been hard uh, since I got up, graduated in 76. 44 years, I've only missed maybe 20 games, home or away, in 46 years. So uh, it's just been crazy. Um, we've even had a couple of tailgates uh, this year just to get together and watch, uh, I'd say film. I don't know if what we're watching is film uh, from when we played, but uh, uh, some of us get together and have a impromptu tailgate and, uh, and watch some games. But, I mean... You have to do what you have to do, and uh, but uh, yeah, this has been tough. Um, every week I tell Lynn, she'll say, "Where are you at this week?" I say, "Well, we're at Northwood this week," and uh, <laughs> and uh, she says, "No, you're not." So uh, yeah, it's been hard. Um, I was just talking to Coach Anise, and he says, "You got to come out to practice. Uh, and, uh, at least I'll get a fix there a little bit." <laughs> Obviously, uh, you kind of talked about it earlier, a strong brotherhood from guys that played uh, w when you did uh, and really carried through uh, to this day. What's, what's it like having the success and being able to experience that the, that the team's had uh, here in the recent past? Oh, I mean, you know, since Coach Anise has been here, uh, it's just been, you know, nonstop uh, great memories. Uh, we've been at all the playoff games and, you know, out in Texas two years ago when it was so close to a national title and just been outstanding. You know, and over the years, we've had some good teams, you know, a lot of good teams in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, uh, you know, different, different teams have been good. But Tony has certainly put a string of uh, great seasons together. Uh, I don't know, he has something like 90 and 8 or something in the last six, seven years. So... It's excellent, and especially as uh, I think it's eight and two against Allendale, that uh, they're nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, obviously, after your uh, playing career, uh, you had several roles working in athletics, working in the alumni office at Ferris State before you went into business and uh, able to watch your your own son come back and, and play for the Bulldogs. Uh, Nick Shibley, yeah. who we had on the show a couple weeks ago, a uh, member of the Bulldog hockey program. What, what was it like uh, seeing him wear the crimson and gold? Oh, I mean, that was special. Uh, Although I coached him in football in high school, and uh, he was a all-state quarterback and holds all big rap. So I was hoping to point him that way, but uh, his love was hockey, uh, where he was a two-time all-stater there and uh, went off to Canada and came back and signed here, and that was great. Uh, cut down, cost, it uh, saved me about 80,000 miles on my vehicle uh, <laughs> playing here, because uh, I, I, they were, he had an offer, a walk on at state and so on. But no, I was great watching him be a bulldog. And I think uh, every dad would like to see uh, if they played college sports to have their son play where they were at. So yeah, that was great. Well, Bill, we uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, thanks for all you do for uh, Ferro State football. And hopefully uh, see the dogs on the field again here sometime soon. We're hoping. <laughs> we'll be back with more Ferro Sports Update right after this.